Maybe he can come correct. We don't have to deal with that bullshit. Bubbles! Hey. What's happening? Oh, um, I was wondering if uh, you were checking out like some of the PS4 games. Like, uh, I think there's a new Batman Arkham coming out. I tell you what. You know, the Batman games, I've never played. I've never played Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, Arkham Knights, or... Arkham what... City's like the best, if you ask me. Yeah, you know, I, I just don't really care for uh, the source material. In all honesty, I mean, the games look fun. Um, but I just am not a real big Batman fan, I guess. Um, Superman, maybe, or... No, Marvel? I absolutely hate Superman. <laughs> Yeah, I think I Superman, think and I've, like I've gotten criticism before, but yeah, Rocco just said it. Superman is a, in my eyes, uh, Superman is a boring character in his there, fucking there underwear. Like, uh, Honestly, I, I kind of feel bad for Superman because he doesn't have good games or good movies, and I mean, the only good thing about Superman was like that Smallville show. You like Smallville? Yeah, I, right. I even like the song, you know. Shouts Tell out. What were you going to say, Rocco? Superman, there's something, has... What Superman is going for them is that he's a really old character. And yeah. There's a nostalgia kind of behind him and like a history that I think that makes him interesting. Yeah. So like when there's kind of a nostalgic Superman thing, it's interesting. I love the old 50s TV show, but I don't think modern day it's very interesting. It's yeah. Interesting. Like, like. Well, they've never. Here's the thing with Superman. It's, it is a nostalgia thing and his costume is so untouchable yeah. that you can't update it. Batman. Batman looks fucking cool now. I love the Christopher yeah, Nolan. Yeah, the fifth anniversary. The only thing I really enjoy out of the whole Batman universe, I mean, there's the, I love the animated series. I like yeah. the Christopher Nolan trilogy a lot. And part of that is because his gear looks updated. His costume, his yeah. fucking stuff is is cool. Superman is still in his fucking underwear. Yeah, Superman and, just can't. And you Superman, can't, yeah. anytime they touch that, they get so much flack. Because you can't really, you know, what do you do? Put him in jeans? Superman's great is an old thing, but not a new thing. Yeah. Like. What were you going to say there, Bubbles? Oh, yeah. Um, the 70, the 75th anniversary came around. Like, I, I guess you guys already knew about that, but, uh, yeah. I not mean, me. Yeah. 75th well, I mean, anniversary of Superman, huh? Well, I'm guessing there might be an anniversary of Superman coming up later, but, uh. Well, what were you talking? What's the 75th year? anniversary? Um,. Well, it's the 75th anniversary of Batman. I mean, I already mentioned that, but oh, yeah. Oh, Batman. Well, I did. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I thought you were talking right. about Superman. I mean... Not Batman. Um, besides, like, uh, Batman and Superman and all, um, what what do you think of, like, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, you know? Oh, you I loved it. That's any good? Oh, I fucking love... My favorite Marvel movie to date. All right. Absolutely loved it. And, uh, didn't even have Wolverine in it. Hmm. How is that? How do I love a Marvel movie that doesn't have Wolverine in it? That makes no sense. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you got the Wolverine, but that's like in Japan and stuff. But oh, you also that got, was, like, the other hey, one. shouts but, out. Brother. The Wolverine, the the, the second uh, solo Wolverine movie, that was great. I loved that. Hmm. Still the only don't think anyone can say the same about the first one, though. I no, mean, no, the first one wasn't that great. Uh, and I don't think many... Rocco was just backing that up, that not many people even enjoyed The Wolverine, the last one that they made. I haven't heard one positive thing other than Garrett. I just mm -hmm. love... It, that was all fan service. It was Wolverine in Japan fighting ninjas. That's, that's the highlight of, like, the 80s Wolverine comic era kind of thing. Yeah. So they throw that in a movie, and it was, it was fun. I think what really sucked was like, I mean, at first they were going to say it's X-Men Origins Wolverine. Like, they were going to make a whole spin-off series out of that. Yeah, like, they did that. That was the first Wolverine was called that, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, so you're a superhero kind of guy. Did you like Guardians of the Galaxy? Honestly, I haven't watched it yet. Although, oh. I am thinking about... I am thinking about watching it though. Although thinking I didn't about actually it. think it was gonna be that good at first because when I saw like the teaser trailer and everything, and it's got like the raccoon and then you know ah at that song, it's. I what are you talking about? What song? Uh, that hooked on a feeling one. You know, it had. Oh that yeah, hooked on a uh, feeling. That's a good. Uga hey, song. you know what? Uh, now I don't know if it's a generational thing, but I've heard this from other people as well. But uh, the way not only was the soundtrack. 
awesome in that film. I think it was used in such a smart way. The soundtrack was incorporated into the storyline almost as a character. And uh, it really... Wasn't that supposed to be the songs that Star-Lord listened to? Yeah, you should see the movie. It's great. It's great the way they do it. And uh, I'm looking for a song right now that was featured, one of my favorite David Bowie songs. When they come right through into a certain scene, they play this badass Bowie song. I don't know if I fucking have it. Is it like Life on Mars or something? No, it's uh, Moon Age Daydream. And it's Mm. so fitting for that scene. And oh man, it gave me goosebumps. It was great. I don't have it Mm. on this phone. Well, you pull it up on, you pull it up in other media. Yeah. Do you enjoy Uh, other media? I didn't think it was, I mean, like I said, I didn't think it was going to be that good at first, but then I checked out the director and it was like James Gunn and he, and I remembered he did like a lollipop chainsaw. Yes. And he, um, oh yeah. He also did some trauma stuff as well. Trauma. So he, guess... he, he wrote my favorite trauma film, Tromeo and Juliet. And I found it. I found that out because Lloyd Kaufman uh, kept tweeting about guardians of the galaxy. And that's when I found out. Oh shit, James Gunn wrote my favorite trauma movie. Now I'm even more pumped to go see this. Because Tromeo and Juliet, if you haven't seen it and you like schlocky... I I think schlocky movies that come out now, like uh, Sharknado and stuff like that, is is old hat. But when that shit was being done before the advent of consumer electronics to where anyone could make a piece of shit movie, when trauma did that stuff in the 90s, that was huge. And I was so into that stuff. And, And still am, but... Tromeo and Juliet uh, stands out as being a big one for me. But, um, yeah, James Gunn wrote that, and then I found out, well, Lloyd's got a cameo in it, which was so blatant and great. Uh, I, yeah, I really like Guardians. I would I would check that out. Actually, speaking of Lloyd, I was checking out, um, he, I think he's doing this remake of Class of Nukem High, and he but was a like, sequel. blatantly making himself a cameo on that. He's directing it, though. Yeah. Oh, and I he think directed it. I mean, it already came out. He's been touring uh, with it at, at and, uh, all the all the all the indie festivals and such. And he also, I think, I think he's also got some cameos with uh, Stan Lee as well. Apparently, well, he's Stan a Lee gets a cameo too. in every Marvel movie. He's kind of the same setting that uh, Lloyd Kaufman's in in, in Guardians. But uh, you know, not knowing anything about any of the Guardians characters, I know nothing about any. The only relevant things in Guardians of the Galaxy were, uh, I don't know if it's a spoiler or not, so I won't even mention it, but like the villain, the main, the big villain character, uh, who they're setting up for further movies, which we got teasers in the, in other Marvel franchises from this. The funniest thing about the teaser in this was that it fell so flat in the movie, it made me love it more than any other. Fuck them sitting in the cafe eating shawarma, fuck Samuel Jackson. Yo, you know what we gotta do? We gotta get another Avengers initiative to get... Fuck all yeah, that bullshit. The way they ended this was such a fuck you to all of those teasers that it was only there for the hardcore people who got it to laugh at the disdain in the theater because yeah. it was silent and it was confusion when we saw it. It was great. Um, but yeah, man... Uh, not knowing anything about the Guardians characters and going in, like, I love all of them. I loved Groot and, and Rocket. I loved uh, uh, Gamora and uh, with the blue. Like, everyone in that. Star-Lord turned out to be such Who was that actor? That guy's rad. Chris Pratt? Chris Pratt, I think his name is. I don't is. know anything he's done, but, man, I was a big fan. Hmm. I know that, um, what's that, that green alien chick? I heard Gamora. that she's in, like, Star Trek. Uh, she She's was in, in Star, Star Trek? Trek? Yeah, she was in Star Trek. It's the love interest for Spock. That's... I'm really devolving her down into just another character's love interest. Sorry. That's not... That's not fair. Uh, she was... What was her character name in Star Trek? Ahora. Ahora. Yes. A fucking yeah. major character. How dare I? See, guys? Privilege checked and problem resolved. Brother! Uh, but back to Moon Age Daydream. Oh, this song, I'm gonna play you out with this song, baby. All right. Okay. Oh, we started early. We jumped the gun. The James gun. But that's not the point. Thanks for calling in, Boobles. 
Boobles. Thanks, Garrett. All right. Peace. That's Bubbles. Squawking like a big, funky bird. <laughs>